Here in Tokyo's neighborhood of secondhand bookstores is our little bookshop. It's full of little stories, and it holds within its walls the thoughts and hopes and feelings of a great many people. And this is More Days at the Morisaki Bookshop by Satoshi Yagisawa. Before we get into more days at the Morisaki Bookshop, let's refresh again on what had happened in the first book. It all started where Takako, who was heartbroken from a relationship she hadn't realized was one sided, and that breakup made her resign from her job and felt lost. So she accepted her uncle's offer to stay and work at Morisaki while also healing her heart. At the end, she rediscovered herself, fell in love with books, and built meaningful relationships with people who valued her. In the second book, we continue to follow Takako's daily life as she now works at a design firm. For her, everything seemed to be going well. She could work at her own pace, keep her personal life private, and during her time off, she made sure to visit Morisaki Bookshop, sometimes helping her uncle, or stop by Severe Cafe where she used to hang out, or to spend time with Wada, her current boyfriend. At the beginning of the story, you'll once again reintroduce to the Morisaki Bookshop. Which is one of the many secondhand bookstores in Jimbocho. It's known for its focus on modern Japanese literature. Though it's not a successful business, it supports an entire community in a way. We'll meet again with the bookshop owner, Satoru, Takako's eccentric yet deeply caring uncle. We'll also meet Momoko, his wife, who in the first book had an entire chapter dedicated to her backstory on why she left Satoru for years without explanation. After Momoko's sudden return, and with Takako's help, the couple began mending the relationship. Now, they run the bookshop together. Despite her terminal illness that we know from book one, this time Momoko is fit enough to help a friend working at the restaurant too. It's a slow-paced slice of life story. Along the way, Takako will share her thoughts and discovery, like how she's always curious with Morisaki's unique customers, and even named them, like the paper bag man, who always arrives with a bag full of books, or the brokers who always hunts for the lowest prices, or the seal collector, and of course, Sabu, the old man who never buys anything but enjoys spending time in the shop. A very interesting part of the book since the first one is that it also revolves around the stories of various Japanese authors and how their works are brought into conversations, like the tales of Osamu Dazai or Saku no Suke Oda and many more. You'll get many new book references. Takako is a careful and introverted person. She had a lonely childhood because her parents were busy, and she's slow to pick up on her surroundings, needing time to trust others. This caused issues at work, where her co workers often think that she always keeps things to herself. One day, things take a turn when she runs into a senior at her favorite lunch spot. Unfortunately, he shares the same name as her boyfriend, Wada. Wada, too. As we'll call him, tries to get to know her, but it soon becomes a nightmare for Takako as he constantly tries to talk to her at work and asks her out. When Takako rejects Wada 2's date invitation, he calls Takako out, and that made Takako really annoyed. She then goes to fence to Momoko, frustrated why people get so upset with her for just being herself. Their conversation makes her realize how her carelessness and blurred boundaries can confuse others. And it also made her realize that her relationship with Wada kind of feels distant because she's not opening up to him. She still keeps things and has this trauma from her past relationship. Now she has a homework to do, working on her trust and communication with Wada. But work suddenly becomes so full that she can't have some quiet time to think things through. At the same time, her uncle Satoru is also a very dedicated person to his bookshop. Even though he h a v e hemorrhoids, he wouldn't even want to take a day off. So after having a conversation at the Savura Cafe with Sabu and the owner, Takako got an idea. 
why not give Satoru and Momoko a couple of days off for a trip while she takes care of the bookshop? It wasn't easy convincing her uncle to leave Morisaki Bookshop. After arguing and fighting and expressing how she cares about her uncle's health, Satoru finally agrees to take a couple of days with Momoko. During her stay back at the bookshop, Takako felt nostalgic. Despite dealing with the rain and her uncle checking in by the phone every hour, she really enjoyed the time there. Wada visited to check on her the first day, and on the second day, her friend Tomo, who used to work at the Severe Cafe, came by for dinner too. Tomo is a book lover too. She now works as a librarian at a college. So the next day, Takako was surprised when Takano, another friend who still works at the Severe Cafe, stopped by the bookshop. Takano, who used to be friends with Tomo and had a crush on her, reached out to Takako asking why Tomo had been blocking his messages. This turned into another mystery to solve, eventually uncovering that Tomo had had a past trauma involving a guy and her own sister with some kind of like a triangle love. And her sister later got into an accident and died. And Tomo felt really guilty that she feels like she didn't deserve to like the guy or even be happy for herself. And that is why she avoided Takano. Seeing both her friends distant, Takako went out of her way to understand Takano's feelings and even tried to help him find Tomo's dream book, which at the end we know didn't actually exist. Her kindness and efforts to help both Takano and Tomo were really thoughtful. In the end, seeing how Tomo and Takano communicated and resolved their problems, thought Takako that she needed to be more open and trust Wada to save her own relationship too. When her stay ended, something felt off with Satoru and Momoko after they returned to the bookshop. Her uncle seemed unusually quiet, but Takako brushed it off as she had her own challenges with Wada to deal with. So the story continues and it's really sweet how attentive Wada is to Takako's needs. He recognizes how special she is, along with the bookshop, Satoru, Momoko, and her relationships with her friends. Inspired by all of this, he even starts to think that he wants to write a book about it. So after we get the happy ending of Takako's and Wada's relationship. One day, her uncle finally shared what had been bothering him. Momoko's cancer had returned, and the doctor predicted that she only has six months to live. It was a tough news for Satoru and Takako, who had been in denial about Momoko's condition. But as her health declined, she could no longer work at the restaurant and started frequently visiting the hospital, looking increasingly ill. No one was prepared for this reality. Knowing that, Momoko then asked Takako for the very last request. When the time came and Momoko passed away, we get to see that even though she only had few family members attended her funeral, However, many people from Jinbocho were there, including Sabu, regular customers, the owner of Savir, Takano, Wada, Tomo, and others. Everyone loved her. Satoru was utterly lost after Momoko's death. Takako was the only one who kept checking on him, visiting his house to bring food, do laundry, and even clean the bookshop so it would be ready whenever her uncle felt prepared to return. At the end, after the process of grieving, we finally see Satoru get back on his feet, visit the bookshop, and with the help of Takako, he found the last letter from Momoko, wanting him to embrace their memories instead of grieving about it. The bookshop finally came back to life and runs again. It's a very sweet and hushing and full of 
life lesson story. And I hope you like the story too. The end. <laughs>